Um, fathering and, and paternal depression and paternal uh, affective disorder are my one of my main interests in, in research. Um, the second in fatherhood in general. Um, uh, other other research interests are attachment, as Vasina said. I study for three four years attachment representations in school children with a diagnosis of, of autism spectrum disorder, which is quite interesting because. The, social difficulties and the attachment needs are often overlap. Um, another topic is the long-term effects of child uh, neglect and psychological abuse. We conduct some longitudinal studies with some colleagues of the Australia and United States, uh, a longitudinal study of 30 years. So it's, it's very interesting to see after 30 years into adult long-term effects of child maltreatment, especially related to neglect and psychological abuse. Uh, I'm very interested in the missing piece of the, of the research, like child maltreatment is so often dominated by sexual abuse, so I try to focus on neglect and psychological abuse. Um, and next, in the last two, three years, I, I study uh, parenting processes in terms of attachment, uh, quality of dialectics exchanges, attachment representation, but also neurobiology, which is not my main skill and competence in terms of my personal background. I'm not a neuroscientist, but I'm a clinician. But we try to integrate this piece of knowledge because, uh, as you can see, this presentation is a very important part of the parenting process. We study this family dynamics and, and this processing in same sex couples just to see uh, how family structure and gender can affect parenting. So this is the general background, so if you have the next question, um, don't hesitate to ask me. I will try to do, I have a lot of slides, so I'll try to be as much as quick as possible, but let's see. Yeah, I can provide uh, another view about this topic. Work before now. Mm. Okay, mm. Mm. Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just um, uh, a short overview. We will have an introduction about paternal role. Um, I will go back. In history and uh, the new roles of fathers. Next, we will we'll check um, what happens to, to, to fathers in several uh, domains, from neurobiology to psychological symptoms in the deaths in transition. And next, the third and fourth part is the, the main interest of the, of the presentation because I will show our conceptual model of perinatal distress in fathers and our propose and I will uh, introduce to you a short question or screening question that we developed to screen fathers during transition to parenthood. Um, just, uh, the thing that uh, introduced me to Brazil and our president, uh, the name is Papa. The next part is just a, a, a short, but I, I will just focus a little bit on the role of paternal involvement because uh, family structure is changing, and I think that this construct is still uh, understudied, and it's very important to address uh, the contribution of fathers to the family system and to child development. I will start from behind, so millennia I go, but for me, just important to put a little bit of attention on uh, anthropological uh, domain because millennia ago, uh, fathers, the, the paternal figure was not related to procreation. So this is maybe one of the several uh, reasons that can explain why father is on the uh, back, sometimes in the family system. So uh, this is really important. We have with the Roman Empire, the assumption that fathers can lead the family with a uh, uh, patria potestas as, as a very clever person. Uh, and now fathers are asked to do a lot of things, like 
not only provide practical and financial support to the family, but also to be emotional to the partner, the child. Um, and, and it's very difficult because the social cultural models are, are still very rigid in terms of gender norms. So fathers sometimes struggle with, with this double position. I should be more attuned, more emotional, but I can't be vulnerable, I can't be weak. So this is very uh, uh, difficult to combine as to different positions. So I think this historical evolution could be easy, could, could be useful to understand this problem. This is just our mother-centered vision of father. I don't know if yeah, just a stupid example, but in my opinion, <laughs> it explains very well. Our, our society is very mother-centered. I don't know in Poland how it works, but uh, still, fathers try to do their best now to be more involved. But uh, sometimes <laughs> it happens. Also for fathers to, 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 to feel that uh, they are not extension. Mm -hmm. uh, this attitude is called, I don't know if you are familiar with this definition, giving. Um, it's not maternal fault, of course, this is, this is a crucial point, but there is a tendency to delegitimate fatherhood as a non-primary. Um, I don't know here in Poland, but uh, in Italy, perinatal services are almost and historically focused on females. So we have, for example, some group for fathers, but yeah. 10 visits for mothers, one visit for fathers. Not mandatory, if you want. So the most motivated can, can be involved, but it's very difficult. So we are trying to, with our research, to change this assumption. Let's start with the scientific, more scientific part. I don't know if you are familiar with this type of primates, Titi monkeys from South America. It's one of the species, uh, the primates that in which fathers are the primary caretaker of their children. Uh, so we have example in nature in which uh, father is the primary caretaker. So mother is essential, but for your children, just for feeding. This reminds me of uh, of experiments about the distinction about feeding and attachment, so relationship and security. Um, this pose question about uh, father, who am I? Sometimes <laughs> uh, ask me father during our visits, who am I, where, where am I? Um, we try to understand uh, fatherhood in a different way also because uh, data and reality uh, tell us that families are changing the structure a lot. So only a part of the children will be raised with a married biological super families. We have an increasing number of same-sex couples. We have a lot of divorce and separation. It means sometimes a difficult co-parenting or single parenting if the other parent is not available. Um, but the data reveals that fathers in general have more than double their involvement in childcare. And this is our starting point to address uh, paternal mental health. Okay. Fathers double, uh, double their involvement in childcare in terms of investment in uh, hours per day. In, in recent years? Or? In Western society. In Western society. In our data, like data I check. The reference is private model, and a little bit older, but there are some references also in the other paper that you, with my name, which I noted 2022. Uh, at the end, I will, go, I will provide you the slides and all the references. Thank you for the question. I think it's useful to start it from the Belsky model of determinants of parenting. The parents is a uh, Multifactorial and complex constructs. Um, this is a revised uh, version of the Belsky uh, processual model of the parenting. 
like um, focused on two different constructs, as I told you before, gender, because we're talking about fathering, uh, and parent characteristics, and family structure, because if family structure change, also paternal involvement change. Uh, for example, I don't know, we don't know, uh, because Titi Montes, uh, in Titi Montes father is the primary caregiver, one explanation, uh, I think it's not confirmed, not uh, an expert, but is the monogamy of this type of primary, because there was the assumption that mother's baby, father's baby. So there was this uh, sad um, uh, sentence, but now with the, all the, the changes in the family structure, we need to address parental involvement, because we have two, three decades of research on fathers, but we don't know if our participants spent one hour or 20 hours per day with, with the child, with the child, with the children. So this is disconnected. So we'll see. This is, I think, a very um, accurate model of some experts in the field, Netherlands group, very experts in attachment relationship. Um, it's, this is a pure behavioral model of emerging fatherhood. So we have different levels from social cultural aspects, like father is in, in the background, uh, norms and values, and until neural and hormonal part dimension. Of course, there is a complex interplay between all these domains. So we need to keep attention that address paternal mental health is not only research, but we need also clinical work. We need also policy makers to change the system. As you can see, there is also paternal leave. We were talking at our lunch about paternal leave in Poland or in Italy. In Italy, for example, just we changed the, the law um, two years ago, maybe, it's just 10 days. So we are trying to add also this piece to our research. How many days you use uh, of paternal leave? Sometimes you have 10 days, but you use zero because there is a stigma or pressure in the work environment, etc. because we are not prepared to uh, include and see paternal involvement as a positive and essential things for child life. Just to be to have a, a closer look, um, this is the second part. So, what happens to parents to, to dads in transition? The first domain is to target neurobiological changes. Just a, a brief overview, but there are some neurobiological functional adaptation. Maybe it's one of the um, more, uh, biggest moment of plasticity in adult parenting and neurobiolo the neurobiological changes. So this can uh, reveal some underlying mechanism that promotes optimal parent. So there is no semantic meaning in this, of course, but it's an important and underlying mechanism that promotes adaptive parent. So we have a change in oxytocin, the famous attachment hormone, uh, a decrease in testosterone, or an increase in vasopressin with it, a correlation with a father exploratory behaviors in attention with their child, and also the role of cortisol in change prenatally and postnatally. But it's very important in modulating the sensitive and responsive behaviors in fathers. So the ability to interpret and identify child signals and to respond uh, in a good time window to these needs. Non-dorm was also neural activity uh, in father's change. Um, a, a recent uh, systematic review revealed that um, there are three uh, neural brain networks that usually are active in, in fathers during transition to the parenthood. Um, mentalization network, and body simulation network, and emotional re regulation network. Um, the experts in the field said that fathers act, uh, um, activate more of a um, socio-cognitive brain network. And mothers, as a gender difference, more uh, limbic system, so subcortical areas. Mm. Uh, but, but 
there is a limitation because, uh, as I told you before, uh, we need to address paternal involvement. So we have few studies that address paternal involvement. One of these uh, is by Abraham, um, and it reveals that fathers who are primary caregiver activate both neural circuits have also a higher connection between the two systems. So maybe uh, the effect of gender can be mediated by the, the degree of involvement in child care. This is one of the hypotheses that I tested also in, that, in a new study, and I, I will show you at the end. So let's start with mental health. We, we have just addressed some um, underlying mechanism from neurobiology studies and neuroimaging studies. Um, I think it's very interesting. This graph is the number of studies published um, on uh, paternal depression in the last decades. You can see that just 2010, we start to study a little bit, a little bit more um, paternal mental health. Of course, there is a growing awareness concern about maternal mental health, and we are still behind the numbers of uh, maternal depression. Um, of course, we are changing also our representation of fathering. This Lego is very meaningful <laughs> in this sense, but as I told you, there is a struggle between two positions because fathers need and want to participate, but there is the risk to be delegitimate, like most of my of the mother that I met in uh, child protection services during the transition to power to told me um, he don't know what does it what means have a baby in my belly. He, he can't. It's impossible to understand for me how it's difficult to deliver the baby to uh, have pregnancy for nine months, so there is still sometimes a battle between parents, especially when there is violence or a low level of co-parenting. Mm -hmm. So this tells us that this, this phenomenon, uh, this, this problem is still understudied, is still unaddressed, still under diagnosis or under screened, and also the consequences under treated. Mm -hmm. This is the most updated meta-analysis on paternal depression, published in the Journal of Affective Disorder. Um, includes several studies. Um, this is the graph with the prevalence rates from the first trimester of pregnancy until 12 months postpartum. Uh, the, the prevalence rate estimated 8%. Compared to the old version was 11, I remember correctly, but still a significant number, one out of 10. And we will see that maybe this number does not reflect the, the number of fathers that have at risk of psychological distress. Meta-analysis revealed this prevalence is not moderated by paternal age or uh, parity level of education of history of maternal depression, but single studies um, will see uh, highlights the role of some uh, predictors, correlates, or risk. Mm -hmm. um, we have a significant difference in the prevalence when we use some questionnaire, rating scale, 8%, or the interview. It's very uncommon to use interview also in our clinical studies, my fault as well, because <laughs> we don't use interview as we should do, uh, but we try to conduct always a multi-method assessment. This is very, to address this, this problem. Um, the interesting thing, also very simple, but important to say is that uh, maternal depression was a significant moderator. So there is an, inter an interdependent and a, and a correlation between maternal psychological uh, mental states and paternal mental states, also in terms of depression and other symptoms. So family process and family approach could be appreciated. Oh, 
Uh, as I told you, there are several risk factors highlighted by the several studies. So we need to, uh, when we meet fathers, we, we should put attention on several dimensions and domains from neurobiology, as I told you before, and personality, parenting distress, which is often related to the perception of infant temperament, but how difficult is of my child or my infant. Uh, pregnancy condition, professional support. I'm conducting a, a study with a Swedish colleague, and we found in some Swedish data that fathers who receive a professional support from midwives um, or nursing uh, have um, a, a better uh, bonding with their infant. Uh, it was the opposite, and it was interesting that um, who is looking for some help online has worst outcome in, in terms of quality of other bonding. So support it should be professional. Um, mm -hmm. depression and childhood adversity outcomes as a modulate can modulate expression and manifestation of uh, a symptomatology and co-parenting. So couple adjustment couple satisfaction, but also the way in which you support each other, your mutual support in parenting the child really, which is different from quality of couple relationship. So you can have a very good quality of, of relationship by a low co-parenting and vice versa. Also divorced parents can have a good co-parenting, for example. So the complexity is the take of message of this slide. Um, this is our third part, and we start with light of all these um, potential risks and underlying mechanisms. We also, based on our clinical experience, we try to propose a, a different model to address paternal mental health. Um, we published yeah, four years ago this paper, um, and we highlight mainly four points. The first one, we will go in details in the next slides, is that uh, fathers tend to express their difficulties, and their psychological distress in a different way from mothers. The second is depression can be masked with other complaints or symptoms. The third most important, most important point is that as you I showed it the graph of the meta-analysis from the third trimester of pregnancy. Everybody, we, all, all the time, we talk about postnatal, postpartum depression. We try to change the terminology in perinatal depression, as the DSM also uh, did, DSM-5 for mothers, because there are no diagnosis, formal diagnosis for fathers, as peripartum depression. We call perinatal depression, try to cover from the third trimester of pregnancy until 12 months after childbirth, because the first symptoms are too pregnant. So postpartum depression is not a good definition in terms of language mediates our action. So we need to be ready to screen fathers early. We should change the terminology. Hmm? Uh, so early assessment is crucial. Why we, we try to um, propose a gender-sensitive screen uh, tool? Because, for example, this is how um, men tend to manifest their the tradition of depressive symptoms. We have, of course, the same um, clinical manifestation like insomnia, loss of sexual desire, reduced work, up, uh, work output, attention to people, but all this uh, manifestation are generally milder or less defined in most of the cases. In other cases, we can find also a, a typical depressive symptomatology, but it's not for the majority of, of the things in our experience, in our day. Um, they express a, a, a vague um, feelings of depressive mood, also because sometimes in qualitative studies, I like very well this point. It's not acceptable or tolerated for fathers to express this level of witness 
especially in a sensitive period in which you are required to be strong to protect your partner and your baby. Anxiety is the crucial um, symptom in fathers. Um, we have, of course, a higher association between depressive symptoms and anxiety, but anxiety is more frequent in fathers than depressive symptoms. So this is clear from the studies and meta-analysis. So very, very frequent. The prevalence range is higher. Um, for this reason, before our paper, another colleague proposed the definition of perinatal mood disorder to include anxiety. So this was the first step to extend the terminology and definition of perinatal depression, because anxiety is a crucial thing. We try to extend more the model by adding other symptoms like abnormal illness behavior. So the way people react to their own body functioning in terms of health or illness. So Sometimes it's more acceptable to express distress physically. Also children sometimes do this when parents are more hostile or less prepared to uh, be attuned to psychological needs. Mm -hmm. So this could be a way for fathers to cope with their distress, but masked depression, as it's also um, we can find for congress organization or other functional neurological symptoms. In our clinical experience, this is very common. Another, unfortunately, way to express and to manifest psychological distress during periods of fear is this behavioralizing gap. So, anger attacks are a higher level of irritability, especially in close relationship. Um, we can find also some express sexual activity or just some fugues. It could happen it's also uh, very frequent that parents uh, and fathers are not able to cope with a high level of distress and quit the situation to be safe. Um, suicide is the important topic of this piece because we know from literature that it's more frequent. In so it is an intrusion of negative affectivity, which is maybe forbidden. And sometimes we, we can see some very strong acts because yeah, the, the inhibition can lead to a strong need uh, to an outburst of uh, physical aggression towards other or toward themselves. Here we found also intimate part of violence. So I risk for this area of symptoms. Um, during transition to father to parenthood, uh, intimate partner violence is a big issue. In our child protection services, for example, uh, we have different cases in which intimate partner violence starts during the parenthood period. Mm -hmm. Oops, the last part is addiction in general, not only substance use. Um, we know that addiction and substance use is also, or abuse is often related to violence. So this can be a, a, an association, so an increase in cumulative risk. But we try to address different type of addiction because in our data, in our clinical experience, we found that there was a higher rate of gambling or compulsive use of internet other at risk behavior, some some case also um, large use of pornography, for example, etc. So this type of um, externalized strategies uh, may help fathers uh, to regulate their inner psychological states, but it can be very very dangerous for fathers, for for the child, and for the partner. So this is our model, the overall model. We try to change the definition in a paternal perinatal affective disorder, trying to combine both internalized symptoms, uh, but also externalizing strategies. So we put all together, we try to propose a conceptual model, which is 
um, from pregnancy to 12 months after childbirth, which is inclusive of uh, a more gender sensitive clinical explanation. To include depression, and regards of non behavior, addiction, compulsive physical or se sexual activity, yeah. and sight. Um, so, mask depression can be better explained in our opinion with this model, especially clinically speaking. So the question, I don't know what happens to our colors, <laughs> our tripod. Maybe. Hmm. Well, our question, uh, consistent with our conceptual model is, are the current measure available, sensitive enough to capture the clinical complexity of perinatal affective disorders? Because for for well, the screening, also the meta-analytic data that I proposed before are based on traditional screening tools like the EPDS, the CSD, which are mainly developed and based on traditional depressive symptoms. So sometimes they include anxiety, but not the other clinical symptoms. So we try to uh, answer to this question. Uh, this is one of uh, our study, um, including yeah, more than 300 fathers during the third trimester prenatally. And we use several measures to assess depression, including the more common, like the, the CSD. We uh, test also the perceived stress, the dyadic adjustments or couple adjustments. But we have also addiction or risky behavior to see if we can uh, check um, other risk in fathers during this period. Um, so our question was, we, we can try to identify some psychological profiles of fathers during the prenatal period, and we run a cluster analysis to, do, to answer to the, this question. We found three profiles. Um, one for the psychological healthy healthy man with low level on the scale we use. We found the men experiencing psychological distress, so either score for anxiety and depression. But we found another group, seventeen percent of fathers that have one or more addictive or risky behavior in the last two weeks. In the last two weeks. So we don't know before if there are other risks, other cumulative risks, but it's just an important data. Um, so maybe when we use the cutoff of the CSD, the percentage was similar to the meta-analysis, 0.8%. But clinically speaking, it can be useful to know that fathers maybe uh, go into some very risky behaviors like addiction behavior or go fast with the car with no reasoning or thinking about some, I don't know, prostitution, other sexual risky relationships. So this could be really important clinically to not to over pathologize fathers, not to control fathers, just to understand if they seek help. Because our aim is to increase the, the uh, involvement of fathers to trust, to trusting relationship. Mm -hmm. And you can express your distress. This doesn't make you more vulnerable or less protective for your families. It's the opposite. So we run another study to test the most used questionnaire for the screening of perinatal disorder, EPDS. Um, and we test the fact, factor structure of the EPDS in a very large sample, um, maybe more than 6,000 fathers. It was the ASPAC database, a very famous database. So it's a little bit older. So in terms of paternal involvement, maybe it could be a little bit biased. But we, uh, we found that the same factor structure in terms of configural environments, but all the items have a, a different factor loadings across groups. So it means that 
EPDS can be used also to address a little bit the, uh, the anxiety that I mentioned, because the three factors are anxiety, depression, and anhedonia. But maybe the meaning behind the item is different, especially for the crime item, which is the item nine of the scale, which is very low in terms of factor loadings in fathers. So just to summarize, limitation of the available screening tools, um, they mainly consider female expression of discomfort and distress. Um, they have not been developed for the perinatal period. This, this is just for one case, the Gotland male state for depression, because it's a male uh, symptom-based uh, questionnaire for depression, but it's not for the perinatal period. The EPDS address this problem. Another interesting result is, is that studies that use EPDS, CSD, or different measure of depression found different prevalence rates, different associate factors. So this is another methodological problem to address maternal mental. And this study, one study that, that compared different measures found, for example, that 20% um, of fathers uh, at risk exceeded the cutoff only on the Gotland male scale of depression. So the sensitive, uh, the gender sensitive measure. So maybe we need also with questionnaire a multi method, a, a multi construct assessment to, to be to capture the complexity of the participant. So for this reason, I don't know in the time if I'm good. Thirteen minutes past two, so we still have twenty. <laughs> this is our um, little child. <laughs> it's a screening question um, that we developed um, to, to address the complexity of the conceptual model. The name is the Perinatal Assessment of Paternal Affectivity, named Papa. Which in Italian it means Pope, so it's <laughs> sometimes nice. We have the WhatsApp group with the Pope. Profile picture. Um, but we published the first validation two, two years ago. Uh, we are also developed a collaboration with Brazina. We are trying to collect uh, data in several countries. It, it aroused a lot of interest because from researchers, but also from clinicians, because it's very quick, very simple, and it's screened. So we can't use it by itself alone. Uh, it's not a diagnostic tool. So just to go a little bit uh, into the, the paternal mind and just to open the first door to build and develop a, an helpful relationship. Mm -hmm. and it, the, the, the good thing is that it can be uh, administered by several professional figures because it's very simple. Mm -hmm. This is the... Um, Structure of the first version of the questionnaire. So we have eight dimension anxiety. We have the English version of the right, the other is the Italian version. Um, anxiety, depression, stress, fear under pressure, anger, so irritability, um, interpersonal problems, somatization, all the regulatory problems like sleep, eating, and sexual desire, and the last one, the addiction of this. For example, running very fast, doing dangerous sports, or taking unnecessary risks. The total score is 24, but I think it's not important to focus on the total score because, for example, we need um, to, to weight each item, of that. the addiction item or the risky behaviors item. It could be important also with just one point because this is just the, the way to, to start and to maybe have uh, an interview with, with the father to be curious about their way to cope with the distress during this period. This is our validation study where it was 350 fathers, we include also mothers because we test also the validity of the questioner with mothers. And we use, um, also, longitudinal analysis with 100 fathers to test to um, 
longitudinal reliability. And we had some questionnaire for the construct validity, like the dynamic adjustment, the persist per scale, and the traditional CST for the depressive symptoms assessment. These are some results. We have a good level of reliability as first measurement. Not a good stability uh, after childbirth. This maybe could be also related to the variation across the, this sensitive period. Uh, but um, the, the one factor model has an acceptable fit. So this confirmed our idea to look at perinatal. Um, affective disorder as a one broad and multifaceted uh, picture. Uh, we have significant relations with, with other variables, so we have good correlation, significant correlation, uh, also in terms of experimental validity. So, fatherly experience, for example, uh, stressful life events during the last six months have higher PAPA scores in our validation study. I will skip this. This the, the model fit for mothers. The important thing is that, for example, for mothers, uh, the item eight is not significant. So the item on addiction, we will uh, rebound the model with maternal data, but we have just seven items because the, the part on addiction of risky behaviors is not significant in, in the factorial analysis. We have a, a, a um, small correlation, but significant between a moderate correlation between PAPA and PAMA, which is the maternal version. Um, so, again, the interdependence should be addressed when we study transition to part. Things become more complex <laughs> sometimes. So, we need help for methodologies, but we, this is some. Um, uh, a brand new article which is in preparation. Um, we try to address the mediating role of both depressive symptoms but also affective symptoms. So with traditional questionnaire but also PAPA to see if they have an independent role in mediating the relationship between maternal and maternal stress and dyadic adjustments. So satisfaction, support. Um, the interesting thing is that we use um, a dyadic statistical analysis. Uh, the name is actor partner interdependence model. So we um, we tend to consider the dyad as a unit of analysis, uh, taking into account the interdependence, also statistically speaking. Mm. We found that PAPA, so perinatal affective symptoms mediate relations between uh, perceived stress and dyadic adjustment. Um, and we found both the actor effect, so father of fathers, but also the partner effect. So confirming also statistically this level of interdependence. So again, at rest the family system and repetitive, but do that. And we have almost 200 couples in this. This is another new study in preparation. We are just looking a little bit more to add other piece of validity, um, the, the correlates of perinatal psychological distress and affective symptoms. Um, we have uh, 149 fathers in this first study. So it's just cross-sectional, but we found um, a, a significant effect of negative infant impairment as perceived by the father, because we use question. So as perceived is the correct way to address question. Sometimes we forgot to do. Um, and co-parenting. So low level of co-parenting are associated significant with higher papa scores. This could be very interesting because we don't find an effect, for example, of gestational age in terms of preterm baby or child age, child age or previous psychological vulnerability. So, 
try to do together just a short summary, not too short, sorry, but 10 points um, to remember. So the involvement, the role of involvement, um, fathers are, are less likely than mothers to seek help. So the first point that in the question for researcher and clinician should be, can we increase uh, the as a services also as a perinatal services, our our approach to fatherhood, uh, because yeah we we need to challenge this point. So seek help should be uh, empowering, not a sign of weakness. Um, perinatal depression, but I would say affective disorder, um, as an effect on parenting. So. Uh, there are several studies on the perinatal depression that show lower level of sensitive behaviors or, uh, or lower level of parenting practice. So it could be a risk. It's not an equivalent. Psychopathology is not an equivalent of non optimal parenting, but it could be a, a risk. Um, perinatal depression show, showed short and long term effects on child development in different domains. There are also some very accurate meta analysis on this. Uh, the same on not only on parent child diet, but also on family system as a couple, uh, tends to develop more gradually, but we need to address it from prenatal period. The clinical expression is different. So, um, symptoms also may persist for a long period, especially, especially if it's not treated. Uh, a lot, a lot of cases in child protection. When I go into the paternal history, they told me, ah, well, of course, now I'm thinking that when I ask about their perinatal period, now I'm thinking that, yeah, I start drinking that. I, a father told me two weeks ago, I, I used to drink one bottle of gin per day, that period. And it starts to be violent toward his part. Mm -hmm. Or another father told me, ah, I was very, uh, I feel anger all the time. Um, uh, for example, I want to, to beat also my children. I have no sexual desire with my partner. So I feel the desire to um, express this discomfort with violence. Mm -hmm. And this can be seen just after five, six years, when the court asks us to assess parents for some uh, child violence, because somebody signaled this, this situation. Mm -hmm. But also violence, you know, is underrated, underestimated. At all. So Papa can help us to have just a first screening, and provide opportunity to involve father a little bit more. An interview could be better, not to control, but to be curious about fatherhood, because it's an important primary, primary. Um, this is the last point, less human-based, but still important. Yeah. Untreated perinatal depression in fathers has strong economic costs for them. For example, after six years, they arrive in child protection. This is a cost, but also for the society, of course, also economically speaking. Um, just to tell something more about our future direction of the project, we try to invest more in the dyadic analysis, which is complex for different reasons. Uh, methodologically, but also in terms of recruitment, because we need couples all the time. Couples, so it's very complex. Um, we try to to also change our assessment, including interview qualitative uh, analysis, which are very important to go inside the, the paternal experience. For example, in Italy, I don't know in Poland, but during COVID nineteen, fathers. Uh, were not, um, um, they can't access the pregnancy, the delivery room. 
doing God. The same thing. So just say, mm, you are not so essential. This is the, uh, the meaning, the underlying meaning. That you are not so important. Mm. Um, this is a secondary victimization, you can see. We can see because it's the system that don't legitimate you as a power. Uh, we will try to implement some studies. We talking about the ecological momentary assessment to address several time points to see perinatal affective disorder symptoms trajectory over time. My colleagues want to check about a cutoff score. I, I don't agree about that, uh, but um, we'll try to do, to do it. Um, we will integrate other family variables, but also other methods. For example, I'm trying to um, assess the association between perinatal affective disorder and um, attentional bias toward infant faces, measured to a computer uh, task, or the association with neural activation using the EEG method. Uh, and of course, also parent-child interaction quality with videotape interaction. Um, the other point is cross-cultural validation. We have different uh, collaboration on the Polish data. And um, I think it's very important to address measurement environments across country because the meaning of symptoms and expression of discomfort can be uh, also mediated by cultural norms, as we, as we have seen in the your behavioral model at the beginning. So I have five minutes. You do have, mm -hmm. uh, yes. I we have, have half an hour. I, I, I have five minutes because I. Yeah, you can use it. Yeah. Just, I will give you the, the slide. It's just recommendation for, for prevention. But I think this point could be sufficient. It's raising awareness among professionals regarding gender differences. Um, and also, this point informing both mothers and fathers that about the difficulties that they can uh, meet and encounter in terms of opportunities and challenges during this period. For example, uh, a very expert, an expert in the field in, uh, in Australia, Richard Fletcher, uh, an expert in fathering research, uh, he developed a um, very good. Um, um, intervention with fathers, the SMS for that, yeah. uh, which is very interesting. It covers a lot of population with this uh, SMS that's just, or also some promotion with AD, uh, with advertise on the streets, just to uh, promote the culture of fathering and of fathers' mental health. I think this could be a, a good idea. <laughs> a good idea because we are still behind, for example, in Italy, as I told you, the paternal leave is 10 days. So um, we still need to do more. But also talking with my Swedish colleague, which is another model, maybe better than the Italian one, but they also have some struggles in, in working with father. Mm -hmm. So we need a lot of prevention, a lot of seminar, also in the Perinatal and clinical survey. I will finish with this uh, last part on involvement or paternal involvement and sensitivity. Um, I'm, I'm very interested in this construct for two reasons. The first I told you is a missing piece. We should know the time invested by fathers. Otherwise, fathers, it means something yeah, very <laughs> with a large variability. Mm -hmm. uh, the second point is that we have no accurate measures to, to address and to, to capture the, the variation of involvement because it's a difficult and complex construct. Like we can have time per day, we can have uh, what do you do? So, a qualitative sample because time is not sufficient. Um, so we need appropriate measure for 
different developmental stages because involvement changes uh, across development according to, to family needs, to child needs. So we uh, conduct a systematic review to see if there is a, a correlation and association between the degree of involvement and uh, sensitive mechanism in fathers, both neurobiological activation and behavior. Um, we found that when a good measure, a sensitive measure is used, this association is more clear. So more involved fathers are, tend to be tend to be more sensitive and response. So this is our starting point, is a study of same-sex families uh, of fathers. As I told you before, the, the, active, the neural activation of the social cognitive parental brain and the limbic parental brain was higher in the primary caregiver, caregiver fathers. So the green bar, these are the two neural network, the amygdala and SDS. Um, you can see that it's in primary caregiver fathers in same sex couples. It's uh, really, really like, so it's immediate and different uh, emerge. Um, and as I told you before, there is more than, for example, secondary caregiver fathers or primary caregiver mothers. So this far, mm -hmm. as you can see, the social culture, the, the social cognitive neural network is lower in mothers. Mm -hmm. This means that involvement can explain part of this story. So we need to address it. The, the role of family structure, uh, according to the previous model, revised model of determinants of parenting, is not just a secondary construct, but an important part of our studies. If we want to address family well-being, we need to take account of it. Um, our studies also, we check the same, a similar thing using the um, a goalable task, a computerized task to, for the uh, attentional bias toward infant faces. We found gender differences between mothers and fathers. So um, mothers were more attracted by infant faces, but when we added the degree of parental involvement, involvement was significant and gender not. Okay, so a similar, these are preliminary findings, but it's consistent with the neurological. We are also running some neurological, neurobiological studies with same-sex mothers to see similar process, and we are analyzing the data. I'll, I'll tell you next time. <laughs> These are just two or three things about sensitive responsiveness in fathers, which is also sensitive to uh, intervention. Um, there is a significant association between paternal sensitivities and child attachment security. I will tell you more in the next presentation on Thursday. Um, intranasal oxytocin administered to fathers seems to have just uh, uh, small effects, um, but behavioral intervention seems to work. So this is a good date from promising. Um, this is my last echo message to, to finish the presentation. As I told you, we need research practice. I appreciated the present my introduction because I had clinical part is essential to uh, give meaning to our numbers, our statistics. Otherwise, our work is like very weak, very weak. Um, but it's important also to stress a little bit more the institution because, um, for example, 10 days for uh, paternal leave is, are not sufficient. But the most important part to, to finish is the staple message. Um, a study revealed that new fathers attend at least some child visits during the perinatal period include depressed fathers. It means that we have the opportunity to screen fathers, but before screening fathers, so they 
are often present jobs of one time, two time, for a visit um, with the midwives, just to be there on the waiting room until <laughs> today with the smartphone. This is the precious, this is precious. This is a big opportunity. We can't miss it to involve fathers. So please, if you work with fathers, don't miss the opportunity to involve them. Thank you for the, the attention. I hope you, my presentation was clear. Sorry for my English, but I'm a little bit out of a little bit tired. But this is my email address. Don't hesitate. I'm very happy to answer to your question or to share article and other things for the research potential collaboration with you. So thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, maybe now there are some questions from the audience. Maybe one, one remark, Nicola. I remember once I was interested in interactions between mothers and preterm babies. And then, you know, suddenly what I could see was that all families were coming to my office for the study. So we had to modify our procedure to include fathers. And, how it, and that's how it started to you know, focus on fathers. Others were simply coming to the office, you know, and I, I felt stupid, you know, to address anything to that. So, you know, so it was sometimes, I see the same thing. Yeah. No, because sometimes we, uh, People ask me during the seminar, uh, it's, it's difficult to involve fathers in research, how we can to, to increase the number of fathers participating. Um, and I, and I said, in my experience, when we ask, they say yes. <laughs> we should ask. But of course, it's, it's difficult, for example, for same couple that was more difficult for other reasons, but um, I think that also promotion of research targeting paternal the paternal of the interest because sometimes yeah also when we met we meet the couple fathers are step behind because we need them to be prospects sometimes to express their response because their discomfort sometimes is within the couple so they need the space, the triadic space for the support is not so safe. Yeah. Maybe some questions, and maybe, uh, Gosha, maybe you can also check if there are some questions from the audience okay. uh, who is uh, uh, online. Yeah, okay, it's online. Oh, it's not, not sure. <laughs> Well, wow, thank you first of all for the great presentation of your studies. Also, first question of course, we know how what is the field of fathers and the role of fathers in traditional cultures and the were traditional cultures just in the end of the World War II or even eighties, I would say, in both countries. So that's very important to be part of the social change. This is what we are doing. So that's really important. And um, my question is about the differences between mothers and fathers. Because uh, to understand the role of fathers, you need to understand the specificity of fatherhood as compared to motherhood. So, uh, for example, if you are saying that the work of fathers double, uh, I would say that due to the typical public uh, ideology, the work for mothers triple even so we have the same pattern for mothers so as far as we don't compare then it's unclear whether whether it's typical for parenting or just for fathering so my first question is what is typical for fathering and the idea and the question the next question if i have which is connected to this one uh is about the different sources of distress for mothers and fathers. Because uh, fathers as traditional breadwinners could be distressed during the transition into parenthood for completely different reasons than mothers not. So for example, did you control for socioeconomical costs, the family and economic economical distress, strength in the family, and also concerns about the future of the family because the 
child is asked to play, and the person thinks about you know that that might be the specific thing, for example, fathers. And the last question, I'm going to three, but <laughs> that's about your background. So you you come from South and you are you are in North, so like I said. So my question is about differences between motherhood, but also motherhood in South of Italy and North of Italy, which we know are completely different. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for this for this question, especially for the last one. And I feel like I can add something. Um, we also are some of an involvement uh, and intensive parenting of mothers for now. We'll have a cross cultural data in June, but we are starting also to have a study on people mothers and fathers in those countries. So we have a measure of just to Thank you. Thank you. I will try to start from the first question, um, which was more related if I was to correct it, just the specificity of the fathers and their depression and the fathers which they present. Yeah, because you said father just pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think it's very important important to um, um, work to do. Open up new reflection also for motherhood. Because these studies, this era of investigation, should make motherhood easier, tidier. Yes. Just, uh, uh, my impression is that sometimes the maternal involvement, maternal involvement uh, can work or can um, become a, a, another shadow. Uh, process sometimes, especially uh, when uh, separation of divorce of poor. How many days with me? How many days with you? So, child protection is very frequent. So, the idea is that if we do some prevention, so we disseminate and promote the idea that also father wants to be involved. Also, father can manage something, not the, the delivery, the physical delivery, of course, but I think that it could be easier for mothers because one of the reasons of an increase in the paternal involvement is, of course, uh, healthcare improvements, but also the, the decrease of the uh, winter rights. So, this is an important. Um, for this, for this um, reason, the institution should be sensitive to father. Because if we have 10 days, mothers are not able to uh, uh, have a real source of support. And so they are, it is a constraint. They should triple their investment, which is mental or physical, but they should. So everything starts to be on the is to make data and results more clear, but there's an institutional piece because uh, this helps relate to the role of the father. And the consequence is this could be a different way to mother. <laughs> they can work, they can help. Scandinavian countries are some good example of the system because they rely more on fathers, but they rely more also on children's ability, which is another point. Because I think that the future, but it's my idea, may be incorrect, but hello parenting is a, a good way to approach um, child development because we are studying how biological relatedness is important. And it seems that love, trust, secure attachment relationship are the quality of the family process among the, among the caregivers are more important. So maybe the future can be a big investment on other parenting, including fathering, but to ask less to the mothers, because of course we it's good that mothers have more rights, but we can't uh, overwhelm them with all the, the same duties. No, it's not correct. I don't know if I answer the question, but I think I'm not guaranteed to be a good solution. Second question was about 
the, the specificity, but also the the source of stress. We control we control the time for for CS the socioeconomic status, but we did have found uh, differences uh, on in terms of economic uh, distress, uh, distress related to economic or uh, financial uh, problems, but. In the first validation studies of the Papa, we found that nationality was uh, significant. Maybe our explanation was that um, it was more difficult for uh, non Italian fathers to uh, seek support, even more of Italian fathers seek support or understand the support they provide, because maybe it was not. Uh, uh, matched with some cultural and other cultural values. So, but also our variability in terms of CS was not weaker. So, because sometimes fathers who participate are highly motivated or have uh, time to be, uh, time to be to risk. So, this is a problem. I think we need to, to, to be more present, to be. Uh, to do our research activities in, in the hospital, in the public setting, to reach out uh, all the heterogeneity of our, our families. The third part, sorry if the answer was brief. Yeah. Oh, I hope you address you, your question. In Italy, it's very different. It depends from the big cities, north, south, uh, and rural areas, uh, differences in terms of stereotypes, gender cultures, uh, motherhood. For example, in my place, where I was born, uh, until 10 years ago, uh, the father with the stroller was just naked. Uh, a stupid person. Uh, it's very weak. Uh, it's a, a looks like a female like father. Uh, so, this kind of undervalued. Uh, this is this is a little bit changed in the, in the last years, but still we have big stereotypes sometimes in the south or mothers because it's not just a problem for fathers, also for mothers. It's a, it's a duty, it's a task of the mother. So you are not good enough if you uh, so maternal gatekeeping comes back again. So. On both sides, in my opinion. Uh, on to the other, up to the north, it's a little bit different than in the big city. Otherwise, mm -hmm. um, I think that mothers suffer more about mm -hmm. their stereotypes in terms of I'm not good enough and rely too much on other things. This could be another point of this. Mm -hmm. Mother, I good enough mothers is able to uh, rely on other relational sources from other Thank you. Thank you so much. That's the more question from our audience. You'd be also a dog, a curiosity. Yeah, you'd be a comment. I mean, I don't know if mine is that much related, but you mentioned you work with LGBT parents too, and you study the Yahoo's agent couples. And I was wondering if like, their approach to parenting is a good friend, or maybe in terms of what you mentioned today of how some, um, well, uh, I don't know, depression develops after, I don't know, it really depends, I know, on how, what kind of uh, like process are we talking about, and what kind of couple are we talking about, but um, is there anything you think worse like uh, paying attention to and what are some big differences you notice? Yeah, I'll take you with the further question. Um, yeah, there are several differences. Uh, in fact, uh, we, uh, a colleague of mine uh, in Italy proposed uh, another revised model of determinants of parenting for uh, same-sex couples because there are other variables that can intervene in shaping parenting practice and, and behaviors. Um, I, we don't have much data about the transition to parenthood in terms of depression or um, mental health, but we have data uh, 
of parents with preschool or school age children. Um, there are a lot of differences because the long journey to parenthood that they have to deal with um, is both challenging because it's long, sometimes not recognized by the law, by the government, um, not one time. No. It's like, I recognize you, no, you lose the, the, uh, your recognition, you, I recognize you all the time, it's just up and down, up and down, so it's very unpredictable and not stable, which is a real source of stress. Um, but this is challenging, of course. Also, the, the assisted reproductive techniques are very complex sometimes. They require a lot of investment in terms of psychological resources and financial resources, um, especially for fathers. Especially for fathers, we were talking lunch, but a uh, lower rate of father because one of the reasons is financial cost of uh, reproductive technologies. And uh, but the point that I want to, to address is they are they also have faced not only challenges but also some uh, reflective opportunities, some high level of motivation, high desire for a long time, which means like uh, a small training or reflective um, uh, parenting function. Like I want to tell an example. I, I, we want to tell our child uh, who is the uh, the mother who donates the gamete, for example. So it's anonymous or not anonymous. This is a predictive function, parenting. So is like a training for a sensitive and a responsive client. So I think, or just in a couple, who will be the biological related parents? So this trust the couple, but it could be a big, huge opportunity to find uh, a balance because, for example, I don't know, yeah, in Italy, if you are not recognized, you need permission of the other parents also to uh, go to school or to go to a visit with your child. So this implies a lot of uh, discussion, negotiation. So this is like a, a training, a reflective training, and it's a big opportunity. But also it's a protective factor for the couple and the family uh, functional and adaptive me mechanism. But research um, highlights that stigmatization is still the most um, relevant a negative predictor of child outcomes in, in children based biases. It's just a brief overview of what it's done. Thank you so much for this. And one question. Minutes, okay, so maybe I could ask just one question. How did you assess paternal involvement? Because that's a huge issue. Also, um, I wonder maybe you can share me and share yeah, sure. how to assess paternal or maternal involvement in general. Yeah, parenting involvement. It depends, it depends from the developmental stages uh -huh. because, of course. Uh, be involved in infancy and be involved in school age is completely different. But for example, we used uh, uh, sometimes the, the, the question of what uh, hours of the day to have a qualitative measure. Um, but sometimes we use the same um, question and I think we ask. Uh, this task, so beyond the, the hours per day, which is just a quantitative amount of time per day. We use also a scale, which is the caregiving involvement scale, um, I can share mm -hmm. the scale with you, but which is more um, for children, for school and children. Uh, there are several questions about several activities, and 
we have three roles, which um, I go to the basic with my child, uh, never the kind of like a type scale, but um, we have another role with the other partner and other person. So we have both um, an absolute score, but also um, a weighted score with other figures that are child in care of the child. So this could be, it might be also the idea to check about uh, this uh, balance between people that take care of the children. For example, in same-sex couples, the co-parent, the level of co-parenting and the um, degree of involvement is always, data suggested are always more balanced compared to uh, uh, heterosexual couples who mother is more involved in the fathers. So this could be an idea. On the other side, we, for another research, we conducted systematic review we found that the study of Abraham and my colleagues, that was the, the brain that I showed before, uh, the MRI study, um, they use uh, an interview with, if I remember correctly, the seminar question. In our opinion, with a quality assessment that we run for the systematic review, was the best instrument available for this type of study. So we try to use again this tool. Uh, checking the, the, the statistical uh, properties, the thematic properties of the question, it works. Um, I, I think it could be a good starting point, but we need more in terms of uh, some combined quantitative and mm. some qualitative uh, aspects because functions of um, parenting are diverse. Yeah. For example, um, this uh, colleague of mine highlights that in same sex couples of fathers, primary caregivers uh, use like the child as a um, um, safe pattern. So I use this figure as the, 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 the moment of distress. And the secondary caregiver, but uh, this categorical approach, uh, in, in my opinion, should be overcome. Uh, was more prone to be a secondary base, so the, the, the figure from which the start exploring. So it could be useful also to differentiate a qualitative approach to differentiate not only the time but also the quality and the function of the parenting figure. Thank you so much. Actually, you might yeah. share it. Fathers came out of the uh, children and marriage five times. We are currently data in 30 countries right now. And we will have data in Portugal this time. We will have the results in June, so we are happy to get fathers. So uh, we can do well. And we are also from domestic parenting, so we are developing this case, but for school age, uh, school age children. So that's the difference. But we also use very similar measure of parental involvement. So on the one hand, we develop a scale of intense clarity, but on the other hand, we are validating this scale uh, in the context of involving mothers, fathers, other providers, but also we ask to what some child is doing certain tasks like more than herself as well. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of similar, I think. So that would be issues with the results in our results. We don't have uh, easy results, uh, so that we have lots of like Peruvian and okay, uh, so Mexican, right now. So we have done, but we need to move on. We can start the collection. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Yeah. With Peter, we have uh, you know, we use uh, um, baby uh, activity studies, and we were uh, fielding by all the caregivers uh, three days a week, two typical days, and one of the weekend. And there were 24 hours and they wrote who was doing something with a baby and different types of activities. 
And then there were some open-ended um, questions uh, to um, to describe certain aspects of the child's functioning. It's difficult to, at least we have data for moms and dads in terms of hours spent on different types of activity. And yeah, it's it's a different approach. And I think uh, 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 partners and and and, and, and support, support. Uh, yeah, yeah they, they also use diaries in the in the studies. Maybe yeah, another important piece could be also the working form. Yes. Because sometimes yeah, fathers have some perception of their involvement, mothers another perception, but then the involvement of vice versa so would be Interesting. Yeah, but there's also a dominance in child development in which fathers are very important regarding school, education, yeah. play. Because the last one, but also in North America, in one of the countries, but, yeah. uh, in terms of fathers, in terms of educational achievements, early in child, really early in child, yeah. it's very important because they are doing the job. The development of that is really true. Also, the purity of, of, of attachment uh, uh, associated with paternal sensitivity is higher in terms of effect size when father and children are older. So, it makes sense. It makes yeah, sense. So of, of, uh, and I'm sorry to say, but let's say, probably not secure base for exploration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, I think we. Yes, we are okay. just uh, three minutes after the time. Perfect. Uh, thank you for no, time thank management you for and uh, for the wonderful talk and so interesting discussion. Yeah, uh, thank you. thank you so much for attending. And the next time we meet on Thursday, 10 o'clock, another lecture of Nika. Yeah, feel free to send me an email for that. Or I'm here to ask you something until Friday. I'm here. Thank you so much. Thank you.